Um, hello, I'm Waswex Laswo. Many of you know me. For some of you, um, I knew. And basically, um, this talk is going to be a little different than my norm. I've been giving talks now for the past, I don't know, five weeks. I've given about five different talks. Generally, I'm concentrating on the miniature painting in my photography, on the miniature painting in my body of work. And if you know me, I... Um, I basically have two bodies of work. I have photo photography, and then I also have painting, miniature painting. So normally it seems like I'm always talking about the miniatures, but today I'm gonna to talk about the photographs and I want to talk more about the photography, um, the more recent photography. But in order to do that, I have to give you a little bit of background for the people who um, may not know me, may not know what I'm all about. So, I'm going to share my screen right away and pull up the PDF. And it's going to be a little spotty because of that, but we just do the best we can. So basically, I came to India in 1993 the first time. It was my first tourist experience. Came back in 1999, and by 2000, I was pretty much living here. So I've had a relationship, I would say, with India for two decades now. Um, when I first came, I was very much a tourist. I was traveling with my Rolleiflex camera and I was shooting film. Um, and what I was doing, I was making photographs in very much the pictorialist school of photography. So I was not approaching India as a documentarian in any way. I was coming from a school where I was here basically, you know, if you know anything about pictorialism, it's the school of photography where you are basically trying to compose a photograph almost like a painting, okay? So I was looking for what I interpreted to be visual photography. I went to a very, very old-fashioned chemical process photography school, and I was very inspired by people like Edward Curtis, okay? Um, so photos developed, literally, because in those days I'd go back to the U.S. and I'd do the developing in my dark room in the US because I was still spending part of the time there. So I'd end up with photographs like this, which is called View from the Monkey Temple Hampi. And you know, you can hear in that title, it's problematic. If we had the right postmodernists in the room, which we might, it would be, what do you mean monkey temple? It's the Hanuman Mandir, you know, you wouldn't call it that. But for me, it was the monkey temple because as a tourist, that's what all the rickshaw wallas, everybody in the tourist trade, that's what they promoted it to the tourists as. So I picked up on the local talk the way it was. Um, this one is called the entrances to homes in Pushkar. You can see I was sort of imitating a Eugene Atjay kind of approach to architecture, light and shade. All of these things were so important to me. I considered myself very much a purist photographer. I was doing, what we call confrontational portraits in that I was not doing candids, but rather I would approach people I saw on the street, such as this ironing man from Trivandrum, and I would ask, can I make your photograph? And once I got permission, then I would make the click and they would pose for me how they wanted to pose. And I would photograph a couple shots, you know, because in film days, you couldn't rattle off 300 shots, you know, you were limited to 12 shots in a Rolleiflex, basically. Um, and so I was doing these confrontational portraits. I was doing landscapes. And when I was done, I had a body of work, which was about, it was only really about 69 photographs that I considered like my good work. And I wanted to exhibit them but what the thing I realized, so many foreign photographers came to India, they always ran back to the US or France or maybe Japan and exhibited their photographs abroad. They didn't show them in India. So back in 2002, 2003, I started having my first exhibitions in India with the help of Alliance Francaise, Kashi Art Gallery, uh, later Simrosa Gallery. Um, they also went to Sri Lanka, to Colombo and Kandy. I got a lot of feedback. Now, I had a lot of positive response on these. Many people liked the photographs. They saw the beauty in them. But I also got my first criticisms that they were Orientalist in some way or ethnographic. And a lot of this dealt with the whole sepia tones in them. 
um, people said they were nostalgic, but I argued that and one thing people don't realize is that sepia tones in photography, when they first came into photography, they were actually a way of toning the photograph for preservation reasons. And also people felt they just made the photograph more rich and warm and they were more pleasing to the eye. So one time the sepia photograph was thought of as a contemporary method, if you go back far enough in time. But anyway, I traveled, I learned some lessons. I ended up settling down in Udaipur here in Rajasthan where there's a lot of miniature painting. And I wanted to start analyzing my own photography as I realized it had to change in some way. I started working with a miniature painter by the name of R. Vijay. His full name is Rakesh Vijay Vargia, but we call him R. Vijay as his artist name. And this is one of the early miniatures. And basically I was having him paint me in the position of making the photograph. Like you see here, this is called In the Rice Fields and here I am making that photograph. This one is called What is Behind Me. I'm making the photograph with the Rolofex camera. And this of course is relating to this image. But that title, What is Behind Me, um, it doesn't only refer to the monkeys behind me and the mandir, it also refers to the idea that this type of photography was behind me. I felt I was changing and like I was leaving behind this, this purest tradition that I had been educated in. So anyway, when I was in Udaipur, I met this man. This is Rajesh Soni. Um, Rajesh, when I met him, was only 18. This photograph's a little later date. He's a little older, but he is a third generation Rajasthani hand colorist. So Rajesh's grandfather was Prabhulal Soni, who was a court photographer for the Maharana Bhopal Singh of Miwar. And he not only shot photographs for the court, but he also hand colored them. Of course, then he was doing um, oil paints on um, silver gelatin prints. Well, Rajesh had learned this technique, but he had updated it to the digital photograph. So very quickly, he started to paint my digital black and white photographs. And what we did is, you know, I had, I had moved to Udaipur at this point. I had made a studio and I wanted to do like the old time photo studio thing. So I made a studio that had nice natural light coming in from a bank of windows. And I was imagining that I would do very, um, very traditional studio portraits in a black and white series. And then once I start, met Rajesh, um, I realized I could transform this into this. And I really liked this look because it was sort of reinventing an old tradition that at that point was dying out in India and the rest of the world. And I realized I could take somebody like Radhasham on the left, um, who's a local Hijra or Minu on the right, who is sort of a more upper class Muslim woman in Udaipur. And, you know, through the addition of Rajesh's hand coloring, um, they became very luminous and, and so much more beautiful to me. You, you can't really know the beauty of these photographs unless you see them in real life. They never come out quite as well online, but they're really exquisite when you see them in real life. Um, this is Rajesh in his shop. This photo is relatively recent. Um, he's actually holding an old photograph um, that's in his collection of his grandfather, Prabhu Lao Soni, in a frame. So this was a tradition. It was an old tradition. It was sort of dying out in India, and we started collaborating. So I ended up collaborating with both Rajesh and Rakesh, the miniaturist, and the rest is history. We started to get some attention for what we were doing. Um, Initially, I was photographing very common people, like this is Ganeshpa, it was called Ganeshpa sitting, the photo on the left, and then this is Ram Das in a chair on the right. Um, and so I was photographing people who were like farmers and shopkeepers, but I was trying to do this in a very dignified manner, almost in a royal manner sometimes. But very quickly that all changed. So um, I started to get more playful. So like this is Zakir and Tarif smoking, um, this photo was actually done on Eid. I knew these guys were kind of badmashes and um, I said, do something naughty. And their idea of doing something naughty was to smoke in front of the camera. So it became more playful. It stopped being serious photography. 
and then, or a serious approach to portrait making. And um, then I became aware of the whole vernacular tradition in Indian photography. So I wanted to play with that a little. So, you know, we rented a Bajaj scooter, made photographs such as this one, which is called Back from Market. Um, my barber Manuj and his wife Devia. And what I was always trying to do was translate something I saw in real life and recreate it in the studio. So it became part reality and part fantasy. And same with this one, this is called The Village Barber. And you know, this man doing the shaving is actually a barber in Udaipur who shaves on the street near Chitak Circle. Um, and we put him in front of a backdrop with some Mina tribal signs and whatever. Um, and then this is actually the, the table and the chair that he uses. So we were recreating reality, but in kind of a playful, fun way. And so through doing this, you know, through both the medium and the approach, the vintage nature, the traditional nature of the hand-colored photograph started to mutate and become more contemporary. And when people start to see these, people I found like these much more than my sepia photographs. There was much more of an immediate appreciation of them um because i sort of brought that tradition into the contemporary times now one thing we did is eventually my old house on ambavgar hill um, had a courtyard so i could actually start photographing in the courtyard so we moved the studio out of doors in this courtyard where i could hang a very large backdrop such as this canvas backdrop and bring in a horse, bring in a camel, bring in a tailor, you know, whatever I wanted could be done. So um, eventually I realized I didn't have a panoramic camera. I mean, I'm, I was very old school. Now I'm shooting digital, but I had a really old decrepit digital camera. And I realized that I could stitch two photographs together to make a panoramic. So this was one of the first of those. It's called The Harvesters. And, you know, we brought in the corn, the buta, and I actually placed it in the studio. This was shot indoors with a backdrop behind it. And then we joined two photos to make one. And I wanted to like expand this process and see, you know, what else can we do with this, this method that we had, and had, we're exploring. Now, this goes to a totally different series. And this is where we're gonna jump around a bit because I've done some series over these 20 years in India. And one of the series was called New Myths. And the series New Myths, there were two parts. There was the first part, which is called First Incarnation, which the main character was Krishna-like. And I was exploring like the more romantic side of male sexuality. And then the other side of it was New Myths, um, incarnation, second incarnation. And I, I used the figure of Hanuman to explore sort of the warlike, aggressive nature of masculinity. So I just want to show you that not only, you know, have the subject matter is ob obviously drastically changed here for some reason. Um, I brought in the miniaturist RVJ now to like paint the tail on, and he's also painted these feathers on the helmet. So, you know, now the miniaturist is also joining Rajesh, who's doing the hand coloring. So we've got two traditions coming in to make, you know, the finished photograph. But if, if you could see this tail in real life, the tail is exquisite. I mean, Rakesh has painted like three different colors of hair, you know, three times. And it's so detailed. You can literally see every hair on that tail. It's, it's just amazing to see. This is now in the collection of the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco. Um, this was also, we did some panoramics in that series, the Hanuman series. Um, once again, many tales they had to be painted, but you can see now I'm becoming almost like a, a theatrical director. Um, you know, I'm really getting into the posing characters things. We're really like producing a little vignette from a play almost, um, having people pose in certain ways. And I had to coach people how they had to look and how they had to hold their arms et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I've, by now I'm far, far away from that purest approach to photography. And I've really like come into what, to me, what is a form of contemporary art 
but I'm using sort of traditional and vintage methods in my approach. Um, we start to get some notoriety for what we were doing. This is actually Christopher Pinney, the famous uh, theorist and writing, writer on Indian vernacular photography. And he's visited the studio in Udaipur, I think three times now. So this was actually on his second visit. And we went out because my studio had shifted to a village. It's now out in the village of Varda, which is about 30 minutes outside of Udaipur. And um, so we actually shot this in the fields outside of the studio. We were reliant on the natural light. It had just gone behind a hill, so there weren't any harsh shadows. And Christopher posed in his dhoti. And then this man is my landlord, actually. This is Ram Singh. And he's taken on the role of the photo wall with the Rallaflex. So, you know, there's an inversion of who's photographing who. And, uh, you know, this is what I started to do more and more. I, it just sort of like turned the eye to the process of photo making rather than just looking out at somebody, but also looking inward, how are photos made? Um, another thing that I started to do was to like expose my edges. And this shows it very well. This is called, I think, it's just called Man with a Beady. And you can see the brick wall on the upper left here of the studio that's exposed. So when your eye looks at this photograph, it can fall into sort of the fantasy world that you fall into on the right, which is done with the painted backdrop and the model. Or you can let your eye drift to the left and see the brick wall, which kind of brings you back to reality. And that's one thing I've really tried to do throughout my body of work, both in the miniatures and in the photographs, is kind of hover in this world where you're not sure what is reality and what is fantasy, because I find that an intriguing space to operate. Um, in this photograph, we've done the same thing. <clears throat> I think, I forget what this is called, actually. I think it's called Group Portrait in the Morning or something. I don't know. But, you know, once again, I've showed the edges. I show Ganpat, I show Jay Prakash, my two assistants, and they're holding bamboo into the photograph because that's a trick of ours. Many times when we make the photos, there's somebody standing on the outside holding a branch in to make it look like the leaves of a tree are coming into the, the photo frame. And of course, you don't see that, but here I wanted to show what was happening. And then the fact that they have their shirts off kind of emphasizes the fact that this whole thing is a construct. The whole thing is a bit of a, a fantasy. You could say it's an Orientalist fantasy, or you could say it's deconstructing an Orientalist fantasy. That's a matter of opinion. Um, but we had actually done this way long back. So this photograph, which was from the Krishna series, the first incarnation series, I also had Ganpat holding in a branch. And in fact, I showed all of Ganpat's body in this photograph. Um, so even back in, I think this dates from 2009, um, I was trying to like, you know, show the edges. I was always conscious of like wanting to show how the photos are made, not just this is a photograph of this person, this is a photograph of that person. And one thing that's very important in my work is that I like people to understand that it's not any one image that is so important, but it's how the images join together to tell a narrative of the foreigner in India. Um, and my experiences. Now another, this, this was kind of an experimentation I did. Didn't go very far for now, but this was a couple of photos and miniatures that were to appear in exhibition at Icon Gallery in New York City. We were scheduled to be part of an exhibition. It fell through sadly. Um, but what I was doing is I was taking a photograph such as this. This is my friend Ajay, and he's supposed to be carrying like a bedroll. And then Rakesh was doing a miniature that was basically depicting how the photograph was made. And if you look at Rakesh's miniature, you see the backdrop behind these men supported by bamboo. But the backdrop is also almost identical to the scene itself. So what the miniature is doing, it's questioning the whole process that I'm using. It's questioning the whole idea as to why am I making photos in a studio when there's beautiful landscape and people right around me? You know, it becomes a little bit of a satire on my own process. 
And as another little footnote, these characters in here with the bedrolls, those are actually taken from Rakesh's grand uncle. So happens that Rakesh's grand uncle is Ram Gopal Vijay Vargia, who's a very famous painter from Jaipur. And um, they were taken from some of his notebooks. And so that's I, those two men are kind of a little homage that Rakesh did to his grand uncle in this photograph. We did the same here, this woman on the right, um, she just sort of wandered into the village where my studio is. She got curious about what we were doing. Ganpat invited her in. We started talking pretty soon. She was modeling for me. And I called it a uh, woman from a neighboring village. Um, and then later, Rakesh painted the same scene in sort of an idealized fantasy way where Ganpat and Jay Prakash are holding the backdrop to photograph her. Um, you can also see that the, the miniature landscape is identical in both the, the photo backdrop and in the miniature. This one is called Hanging the Wash. Um, same thing is going on, a miniature that's making a comment upon the hand-painted photograph and how it was done. Now, this photograph is kind of unique, and some of my photographs are kind of outliers, and this is certainly an outlier. My, uh, my friend Lena Vincent from Bangalore, well, actually, now she's living in Goa, she flew up to visit me. We went out to the studio. She was writing an article, and uh, I made her portrait, and that's the portrait on the left. And it was very sad because she came on a day that was really hot and humid and there were a million flies and it was quite an uncomfortable experience for her to model for me but she put on a brave face and, and we made a nice photograph of her holding these old bags with of course the uh, the shiva on it and everything and then afterwards we were just sort of resting and i said you know it'd be fun let's do another photo of you being unhappy with your portrait so i took a knife and the right one and i just physically cut the painted backdrop. It already gotten a little old, so I didn't mind if I, I tore it because after a certain amount of time, we destroy the backdrops. So I cut the backdrop and then we did another photograph of her holding the knife with this disgruntled look. And there's two things we're basically trying to convey with this. One is that the photographer, when he shoots, sometimes thinks he's got a beautiful portrait of somebody. But as any photographer knows, many times you're subject who you photographed is not actually happy with what you've done with them. And then the other thing it kind of exposes is sometimes people put on the happy face for the photograph, but you know, as soon as the photo is done, they go back to being kind of grumpy or whatever. That actually wasn't the case with Lena because Lena is a wonderful person and she really is like the photo on the left. Um, now, sticking myself in the photos, this is called Madam X. It's an old photo by now. It goes back to 2008. And um, that's actually me, of course. And I'm in drag. And I put on this god awful heavy sari. And I had a local hedra by the name of Radisham, the same one in the earlier photograph, um, help me put on the makeup. There was also a very famous French makeup artist in town at the same time. So between this hedra and this famous makeup artist, they did my makeup, they did my henna and everything for this shot. Um, it's always been one of my favorite photos. And, and you know, it's a little play on gender. It, that, to be honest, it was just sort of a fun thing that we did. But later I was invited to be part of a show in New Delhi that was a tribute show to Ravi Varma. And so what I did for that show, I did myself as Mohini from the Ravi Varma print. Um, I actually, you know, we tied the rope to the roof of the studio. I sat on a board of some sort and, you know, pretended like I was swinging for the photograph. Then it got doubled in Photoshop and RVJ, the miniaturist came in and he painted on all of the sari very beautifully, plus me in the uh, the cream colored suit and the red tie as I'm always depicted in the miniature paintings. And of course the hats flying through the air. So, I mean, now we're getting like really quite contemporary in, in what I'm doing. This one is called The View. And <clears throat> it was a little bit, it's, it's sort of like uh, a nod to the old timers in India 
what I call the long timers, the expats, the unofficial immigrants such as myself who have come to India and have been here for many years. You know, they're no longer tourists, but they've sort of settled down. And this view is actually the view that I had from my old house on Ambedkar Hill. I mean, it's, it's almost identical. It's a little fantastical, but I had a beautiful view like this from my terrace. And so I'm like looking at one of my old, own books. This is the Photowalla book. And um, I'm looking shocked at it, of course, as if I've seen something shocking. And then, of course, the bottle of wine is also reproduced on the TV set. And I don't know if I should say this because I think the collector who bought this is actually watching this right now. But this photo was never really finished. It went off to exhibition before it was finished because we wanted to add rabbit ears to the television and we wanted to add a cord painted on and we wanted to add in some sort of flowering bush here. That was the larger plan for this photograph, but I had a deadline to make for an exhibition in Hyderabad, got shipped off before it was actually completed. So if he's listening to this, we can talk about it later. But anyway, um, this is, uh, <clears throat> well, I wanna say this is one of my better known photographs. This is uh, <clears throat> now in the collection of MAP and the Museum of Art and Photography in Bangalore. This is the evil orientalist. Um, my computer's not letting me zoom in now. I don't know why. But anyway, um, if you look very closely on this holding screen, you will see Pushpamala N's very famous photograph where she's posing against the grid in like an ethnographic um, portrait done by an ethnographer. And she's glaring out at the camera with this very intense stare you know, very piercing stare. And I was like, well, who is this Orientalist or this ethnographer who's like making the photo? Who is the camera walla? So what I wanted to do is like pull the camera back, you know, and it's like, well, let's see who this camera walla is who's actually taking the photo. And of course, the person we see is myself playing the role of the evil Orientalist. I think this was the first time I donned that moniker actually. And I'm in like four different poses on here, but you know, all of the poses are a bit of a satire. They're kind of over the top. Um, they're caricatures, you know, that it's not a real human being. And I think that was the point I was trying to make that many times when we talk about Orientalism and the Orientalists, we forget they were also human and they had, they had personalities, you know, and they probably had good sides and bad sides and all of that. But um, this is a fun, and, and just as a side, this, this man on the far right, his name is Christian, and um, he's a beggar here in Udaipuri begs at Chitak Circle, but he's quite a well-known personality because he does tricks and he's kind of an acrobat. And in the early days, I did quite the series on him. He came to the studio quite often, and we also visited his home, blah, blah, but anyway. This is later. These images date from 2014. Um, it was a series called We Are Always Working. And what I was addressing here was I had a family member when I was young who worked for the Milwaukee Public Museum. And his job was, he was the art director of the Public Museum. So his job was to supervise teams of artists who painted the paintings that were behind natural history dioramas. So if you imagine something like the African lion on the Serengeti, let's say, okay, he was the one in the museum who supervised the artist who painted the backdrops to make that a realistic diagramma, diagram, diorama, excuse me. And um, I started to wonder, like, like, did that have any influence on what I was doing in the studio? I felt some of that had crept into my own work somehow. So I thought, well, okay, let's just confront that. I sort of want to exercise that demon that had gotten into my head. So we did this series where we basically said, okay, this is a diorama, we're gonna play with it. So this is Ram Singh again, my landlord, one of my two landlords out there. And you know, the villagers are all, they're very nice and they play with me all the time with this kind of thing. And so we covered him up with plastic, like he's a, um, an ex, you know, an exhibit in this diorama and he's covered with plastic while Jay Prakash is in the background um, sweeping the background and cleaning off the cobwebs. And I'm in there as the museologist 
examining the, the, the artifacts. So we did five in this series. This one is pretty much on the same idea. Um, in this one, my friend Siraj, um, my friend Siraj uh, is playing two roles in here. So he's on the left, he's like in modern dress and he's using a vacuum cleaner to clean the backdrop. And on the right, he's in a dhoti and it looks like he's going to use the, um, I forget what you call it in Hindi, but he's going to, what do they call that now? I forget, uh, I'll come back to me later. But the, the point is, I wanted to make it that you're not quite sure if he is in this diorama as an exhibit you know, possibly as like a wax model or something, or if he's actually in here, because he certainly is not cleaning the diorama in any way. So you've got two people playing different characters within the same photograph. Um, this one pretty much on the same notion, though I'm ex inspecting the painting in the background. And then this one, which is probably my favorite, um, that's, Summer Singh standing there from the village. He's a great old man. He's my buddy when I'm out there. And um, he let me like measure him like I was measuring how high he was in the diorama. And Ganpat is in the back. And Ganpat happens to be of Mali caste, which as you know, is the farmer caste. So many times Ganpat makes jokes about him still being a Mali because when he's out at the studio, he's rearranging plants for me. So it's like we, it's kind of an inside joke for us that he's in there moving the plant in the background. Um, then moving on to a little later series, I kept inserting myself in these photographs. Um, this photograph is actually going back to a very, very early miniature from 2008, which was called Pani, which was, of course, was a, a little, um, nod to the idea about drinking from Lota and drinking from plastic bottles. And this is pretty much the same thing, but just done in photographic form. Um, here I am posed like this with butterflies on my arms. And this was to capture the naivete of the foreigner oftentimes when he comes to India and he's in these tourist locales where he thinks everything is so beautiful and magical and wonderful. And of course, that's because he doesn't have to work. He doesn't have to actually survive in this country. He's always here, you know, as a tourist and surviving on an outside income. So that was a little a playfulness on that idea. This one is I'm spoofing myself and I'm spoofing one of my own photographs. Um, the photograph on the left. Um, is called Monsoon Shower, and my friend Deepak was using a mutka to pour water over himself. We actually shot this in the lake. I'll show you later how we did it. And then on the right, I did myself showing my fat, grotesque body in the same position with the same backdrop. Um, so it was kind of a play. I, I really like humor when I direct the humor towards myself. Like, I never direct the humor outward, but the humor is always directed towards myself and my work. Um, becomes satire. This is how we actually did it. We put the backdrop on a bamboo and held it up in an arm of Badi Lake here in Udaipur and had a very quick time, short time to, uh, to make the photograph before the bottom of the backdrop got wet. And then I had to, and normally I don't use a lot of Photoshop, but in this one we had to, of course, get rid of that seam and blend the two before Rajesh painted it. And then this is more from that series. This is, the series is called The Observationist in a Stolen Garden. And the reason I call it The Observationist is I wanted him to be less Orientalist. Now he's, he's become more of a, what's the word? A non-threatening individual. You know, he's just here enjoying himself and observing like an old naturalist. He's not like, scouring the country for the queen or something and documenting in any way. He's just the observationist. So here he is, you know, of course, collecting the mangoes and Rakesh is doing a lot of painting on here. Uh, so it's the miniaturist and Rajesh working together. Um, the observationist is still using Orientalist tools though. He's got his telescope in here, you know. Typical things I've always used is the telescope, the camera, uh, and the magnifying glass, because to me, they're all tools of 
sort of European enlightenment, you know, so you think of them as tools of exploration. And I sadly, I didn't include, I, we did a wonderful photograph, which is actually called the expedition, but I didn't include it in this PDF, I forgot, but it plays on that whole notion of being an explorer. Um, we're almost to the end, so I'm probably running over time now, I don't know. This one is one of my favorite from that series. And of course, I've got the butterfly on the tip of my finger, and plus I'm holding a butterfly net. So there's a little tension that's produced because in one way, I'm being very gentle to the butterfly. Like I really just love that butterfly, but then I've got the net in the other hand to catch it. So you, it leaves you with a question about whether or not I'm gonna let the butterfly go or I'm gonna catch it in the net. And I think that's an interesting image for that reason alone. And you'll see in all of these, like Dalpat Singh, who's our backdrop painter and has been for years, um, he's really faithfully reproducing now some really historical miniatures. Um, I think this miniature was maybe in the collection of the Art Institute of Chicago, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, he's reproducing historical miniatures and through my photography, I'm now entering the miniature through the element of, through the, the medium of photography rather than using the miniaturist who's painting me into the scene. Now I'm actually entering the scene through photography. And so that's the way I've kind of brought together, you know, at this point I've brought together um, the whole thing of um, photography and miniature painting, which once again, I have to emphasize, I see that both of these bodies of work are very joined and they work together in tandem. So I, I'm far, far from being a purist photographer anymore. I've really taken a turn in a very different direction. This is, you know, the monsoon. I won't say much about it. I think I've overrun my time. Um, this last little series, this is called The Culture Keepers. And it was a comment about um, the museum system, okay? And how we archive things. And this was all based on these desk plaques by um, Dionyta Singh. She had made these in tandem with Bhavna Cocker and Latitude 28, they went on sale and these desk plaques say on one side, the registrar. So I played the registrar here and I played the director. Of course, the director is falling asleep and has money on the table. And uh, finally, the curator holding up the magnifying glass and the objects of his interest. This is called Three of Swords, and I often say you can think of this one of me being pierced with, you know, three arrows of criticism that's often leveled against me. So you can think of one as being nostalgia, one as being Orientalism, and one as being sentimentality or something like that. But, you know, I hope I made a bit of a case besides talking about the mediums that I'm using that my, my work to me is contemporary work, but I'm using traditional methods to affect it. So I'll leave it there and we can open up discussion. How much time, my question is, how much time do you spend on each uh, image in terms of, you know, planning it, the concept, or is it instinctive? How much is instinctive and how much is, I, I see there's a lot of collaboration as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah, my whole practice is collaborative. I've, I do entire talks sometimes just on the collaborative nature because, Basically, I'm working with six people now all together. Okay, there's our VJ, the miniaturist, there's his assistant, Dalpat Singh, there's our border painter, Shankar Kumawat, um, and then there's uh, Rajesh Soni who hand colors the photographs, and then there's my assistants, my personal assistants. So it's a big collaborative effort. Um, timing on work is really hard to say because, you know, we make backdrops sort of continuously. And Dalpat uh, supervises the background painting and he brings other people in to make the backdrops with him. So he doesn't have to paint them all by himself. And that can take several days, but we use a backdrop for more than one photo because I mean, sometimes you can use the left side of the backdrop for one photo and the right side for another and the middle for a third photo. And they all look different depending upon how you arrange the props and the plants and the models. So um, you can't, it's hard to figure in that amount of time. Making the shoot in the studio, I always tell people who come out to model for me, I say it's gonna take about an hour of being out there, not counting the travel time back and forth. 
Um, and generally that's the case. I never know what's going to happen, you know, as a photographer, even working in the studio, you know, there is that element of chance. And sometimes, you know, your models give you that perfect pose and that perfect look on the very first click. And, you know, after that <laughs> first click, it's like, it's finished. I don't even have to go on. The rest is just a waste of time. And then other times we'll be out there and it's like, God, I fill up one memory card and pull out the other memory card because I'm not <laughs> satisfied yet. And sometimes we go back and there's nothing. And I just think, well, that was a waste of time. So it's, it's hard to put a time on it. With Rajesh, with his hand painting, he can now hand color a, an average smaller size photo quite quickly. He can do it in a day, day and a half. You know, what, but what people don't understand about that is he's been doing it for so long, it comes so natural to him. You know, it's a skill that he's developed. And I've have had, I had in the old days, had asked other people to try their hand at coloring photos and they always butchered him, did a horrible job. Like Rajesh really has a skill. He's got a skill. So it's like learning the piano or anything else. He has a skill. Now he can do it, make it look effortless. But that doesn't mean that he didn't have a lot of training to do what he does. Yes, that, uh, did you ever experiment? Because in all your photographs, there is a, a sort of a color scheme. Did you ever experiment with other color schemes, you and Rajesh? That's one question. Another question. In your photographs, there is a broader categorization. So where do you put your Gauri series? I know in the book, there is a debate whether it's the ethnographer or a photographer or an artist. So where do you actually put it? What's the wording? First, first, Sonika, I'll apologize that I didn't talk about the Gauri series because Sonika is the essayist who did the essay for the book we put out last year on the Gauri dancers. <laughs> and I'm sorry I didn't talk that's about right. that today, Sonika. But you know, the reason why is even though that's a fabulous series and that's a beautiful book, you guys, you can order it at Amazon. I'll give it a plug. It's all Gowry Dancers and Sonika wrote the essay. But um, to me, it was very much in the normal portraiture mode of what I do. And today I wanted to talk about how I've diverged from that and have done some things that you could consider more contemporary or even postmodern in their nature. Um, so as for the color scheme, yeah, the color schemes, I think you know this, Sonika, but I mean, sometimes I've gone after Rajesh because it just seems like, oh, come on, how many, you know, pink and blue photos can you give me? Sometimes he kind of gets in a rut, you know, and sometimes like, come on, let's take this more seriously. So, I mean, you know, but that's all part of working together. Um, and I have the same problem. I mean, sometimes he gets after me too, you know, it's sort of like, Chacha, you're just in a rut. You've got to do something new. So uh, we haven't tried different mediums yet. I mean, basically, we use a high grade watercolor. Um, we had some problems in the early days with colors fading from some of the first colors that we used. And because of that, I've simply been a little bit afraid to go out and venture into other terrains because I don't want to have that problem of color fade. And I know what we're using is pretty archival, you know, as far as a watercolor is going to be. It's the same thing. You have to keep them out of strong light, obviously, like any watercolor, but they're pretty permanent. So, okay, well, thank, thank you for inviting me today. Thank you, people, for attending.